Good afternoon. And Habari to you all. It is indeed a pleasure to come again to, um, to share with you my, my experience in homeschooling. It's not an easy task and it's not an easy, it's not even an easy topic to, to to, um, to share, but by, by God's grace, I, I have seen the fruits of my labor. And, I, and so I want to take this opportunity once again to share them with you. And so as we, um, as we begin, I, I would like to, let me share my screen. Is my screen screen on? Um, no. no. Okay. Sorry about that. Just give me a moment here. Okay. Can everybody see? Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. So. I'll let you to do something. Hello, Angie. Yes, I'm here. Can you maximize your PowerPoint or your keynote? Oh, yes. Just Sorry about that. Okay. Good. Okay. How's that? Better? That's good. Okay. Let's um, uh, begin with the word of prayer, and then we'll um, sing our, our hymn, and then we'll start the presentation. Okay, so let's seek the, seek the Lord in prayer. Dear loving Father, we, think we come to you again on a day that you have given us uh, to come together and to seek your, your grace and your mercy to seek your love and your tender mercies, to seek, seek knowledge and wisdom. And so, dear Father, Lord, I thank you for, for what you have done in my life so that I can share to my new friends here. We ask for thy Holy Spirit to be, a, to be with us and guide my lips, my mouth, and uh, so that your, so these words that I will, will utter and your pe children will hear will come out clear with understanding. So I, I submit each and every one that is present, young and old, and may your, your presence be in the, that place. And additional angels to guide those that are still coming in. May your name be, be blessed. May your name be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Oh, Jesus, give me 
It was six years ago, my homeschool was given a name, and this is the name of my homeschool. Diligent Homeschool Academy was born in 2014. It was, it was, I chose that name because I came across a website that um, I had to put in some information and this was the result of the name, and I love it because when you look at homeschool, when you take the choice to homeschool, you have to be diligent in it. As I begin to share with you all today about my practical experiences in teaching some character qualities Found in Second Peter 1, 5 through 7. I'll ask someone if you can read it for me. And beside this, giving all diligence and to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, goodness, and to goodness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye neither be barren nor unfruitful the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. And as we look at our first lesson on diligence, I want to share with you um, what I do with my children when it comes to character qualities. Uh, their age, my son is 10 and my daughter is nine. And so they do know how to read. And sometimes with my son, with his uh, disability, but he is able to um, say a word, but yet he asks mom, how do you spell it? So what I do is I first show and say the word. Then second, have them say the word. Then third, divine, uh, defied, divine, sorry, the word, um, look up the, the, the word. We, I will help them look, at the, look up the word in the dictionary to find what it means. And then fourth, look for the word in, a, in the Bible and then fifth, apply it daily. And I will show you in the next slide. So we see that diligence means careful and persistent work or effort. And so I try to explain to them um, that in order for us to be diligent, we have to be persistent in what we do and also be careful. I know for my son, um, he would say, um, to keep my garden clean. Because his way of thinking is so different than his sister, I use, use that in a way to, to apply it into the work that he does. Like say, um, currently we are working on cursive writing. 
I'm trying to get him to, um, to keep his paper clean. And so when we're writing, we have to be careful in how we um, position our letters so that if, we, if someone reads, reads something, read a letter, for example, that person wants to be sure that they know what they're reading. And so um, he is still not sure what, um, he's still haven't gotten it yet. He, like for printing, um, he would, um, when he's writing, he would not uh, remember to space the words out. And so it will all come out Greek when, some, when dad or, or, or Nana will read it. They don't know what he's actually written. But, and so what I'm doing with him in his writing is care, carefully making lines on his paper to know that, that each letter have, has a place and even the space have a place. That when you space out the words, uh, then, you'll be able, then you'll be able to know what that word is. Then I, I find a, a scripture that has the word in it, such as Exodus 15, verse 26, and said, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that, that healeth thee. And so in explaining the scripture in, with the word um, and knowing what the meaning is, I talk to them and, and say, we, when we come to God, as, as he said, mentioned in the Ten Commandments, we want, him, we, we want our children to acknowledge God as, as our Father, just as we want to acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God. And so we want to do that diligently every day. And here is where the application comes in. Every day, every, every day, um, I would say, um, actually, let me start with my son. Once a week, I would, my, my washing machine has broken, and so now we're currently going to the laundry mat to do our, to do our wash. And so every week on a Sunday, we would, I would go with him to the laundry mat, and my daughter will be in the kitchen helping um, her grandmother um, preparing um, dinner. Or, um, or lunch or whatever time during the day. And so uh, this is where diligent is applied um, in whatever location. Our next practical lesson is on patience. Patience at times can be so difficult to have, but in this lesson, I wanted, wanted to get my son to tie his shoelace. And so what I did was I got a pair of old sneakers, red sneakers. I and then I received from the, from the inspiration, I received the inspiration to write this poem, as you see. And I called it My Shoelace Story so that he can know that is his story. And even um, I use the same thing for his sister, that is her story, because they're learning how to tie their shoelace. And so I would do it repeatedly um, every day so that they can know red over black, bring red out from the hole, and pull down red and black. Black bunny ear, wrap black bunny ear, and hold tight to leave a hole in between, to see red peeking through, waiting to be pulled out to. Wow, another bunny ear, it's red. Pull down two to have two bunny ears looking back at you. And so when 
I would say that to him every time we would practice. Um, he would get so excited and he would, when it comes to two bunny ears, looking back at you, um, it was such a joy to see that he was, was in, so engaged in it that he was able to, he was able to, on November 13, 2018, last year, he was able to successfully tie his shoelace. And so we, we had a day of celebration and his sister, his sister was so excited that the month after she, I was diligent and patient with her and did the same thing that I did with her brother. And she too was able to successfully tie her shoelace. As we see in the, the book of um, 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 5, we see that love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. And so when our children when my children were, were um, not getting it during our, our trials of practice, I would say to them, it's okay. We can do, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We have no, we have, um, we're not in a rush. We're not going anywhere. And so mom is here. Uh, and you just take your time, work the steps, and you'll get it. And so... If we, as parents, keep our, our composure and not get um, uh, too nervous or anxious, um, upset that they don't get it the first time, keep trying. Keep, keep doing it. Children learn by repetition. In a lesson, a practical lesson on perseverance, I wanted to, I, I um, mentioned earlier that um, my son, uh, I wanted my son to, um, again, learn how to write in cursive. And so this is where perseveration, uh, sorry, perseverance um, is applied as well. Pray always with, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all persever perseverance and supplication for saints. In our practical lesson on virtue, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. The enemy can, can, can uh, put things in our children's mind that will distract them. And the influences of other peers, if they're not in good company, can also be a disarm, disarm to them as well. And so with my children, I say, this, I say this scripture, this text to them every day. If I see, see that they have said something um, that was not appropriate, I would, I would fall back on this text. And they will say, I'm sorry, mom. And I will forgive them as Jesus did. Amen. Our voice, our voices, our tones um, in our teaching is so important. Sometimes we can get so, so frustrated if our children do not get it, get what we're teaching. And so we want to be reminded of, of how Jesus spoke, spoke to, to his disciples. And 
It was always in a loving tone, but yet um, he was stern in a loving way so that, and he was also full of reason so that they can think. And so um, we went to, to follow in Jesus's footsteps by using the same tone in our voices when we're teaching our lessons. Practical lessons on knowledge, knowing God. Study, uh, here we are studying um, the anatomy and physiology of the, vibe of the body. If you're familiar with this book by John H. Kellogg, it's um, a book that you can find online on PDF. And um, I don't know if you're able to get it in, in Africa, but um, I know for sure it's on PDF that you can read with your children. And it's, so, it's written in a simple matter that, um, that any age can understand. And so this is what, we, what I did in, um, in trying to understand the anatomy. Um, I'm not a good artist, but I did attempt to try to trace the body and to label, label the, the parts of the body so that they can see. Uh, it has been, um, and I'm gonna just throw this in, it has been about maybe six years now that I have uh, been introduced to the truth of the one true God. And so I wanted to, um, that just, just made my whole thinking um, change in trying to teach my children who God is, the one true God is. And by doing a lot of visuals, writing, writing um, uh, scriptures that they will associate the love of God three years ago. Okay. Sorry. My husband was just correcting me three years ago that we have been, been in the one true God movement. And so um, I wanted them to see, uh, I use a lot of poster boards. So I wanted them to see um, through scripture again in Genesis 126 that says God and God said, let us make man in our, in our own image. After, after our like, our likeness, and hold on, <laughs> the print is so small that I uh, can't even read it. Um, and God said, "Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let God and Son them have dominion over the fish of the sea." and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And I also have Genesis 2 verse 7 that says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And I'm sorry that you're not able to to um, see, I don't know if you're able to see the small print, but I'm reading, um, I, I have Bible lesson um, and memory verses on there, the character quality of diligence. Uh, and I have also the, a tree in the middle. I don't know if you can see it, but um, it's between the red paper and the body. And um, I have Psalm 1, verse 3 that I shared with you yesterday. To know that uh, food, to um, have the association that with the tree, food helps you grow and gives you energy to, to move around. As for the, for the tree, um, it moves according to, according to nature. Here again, we, we have our learning styles. 
children learn by visual, where they, uh, whether um, they're preferred using picture images, and that, that's what I like doing. I like to do a lot of visuals. Uh, music, musical, auditory. A child can prefer using sound and music. I use a lot of music in my lessons, especially with uh, hearing scripts, uh, familiar scripture songs, or try to try to ask them. Um, not try, but pray. Pray that the Holy, that the Spirit of God can can give me a tune, a melody, to help them to remember a certain scripture. Uh, a child can be verbal, where they prefer using words, both in speech and writing. A child can, be, can learn through physical kinesthetics, where they prefer using their body, hands, and sense of touch. A child can learn through logic, uh, mathematical skills, where they prefer using logic, reasoning, and, sim and systems. A child can learn by social, and I, I'm going to tell you that you, you may, may have, ha, I don't know if you have had people say that homeschoolers do not social. That's not true. Homeschoolers can socialize, and that is a fact. They can socialize. Um, while home, my son has been able to meet people out, out of our home. And even through, through, um, through, mess through uh, WhatsApp, we've been using the social media to, um, to connect with other people. And so they have friends. They're not friendless. And so ch children who are homeschooled, um, they can uh, be like any other child, uh, having friends and, and having a happy life. And lastly, a, a child who can um, learn to work by themselves is a self-learner. And, and so these are good learning styles that, these are good learning styles that we can know where our child is learning. And first by, uh, sorry, First John 4, verse 7 and 8 reads, Beloved, let us love one another. Love is of God, and everyone that liveth, sorry, supposed to be loveth, loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth God, for God is love. Our next practical lesson is on temperance. <laughs> Here, my son is a visual learner, and he also is a kinesthetic type of learner where, where he loves um, to move around. He loves to run. Uh, so I have space where he do, that he's able to run inside, and I give him the opportunity to run outside. Uh, this is where, where we were, um, Exercising, for our schedule, we have, and I have a schedule board there as he's looking at. And so he, that's the second thing, the second thing on our, our daily schedule that we do. We make sure that we get our body fit for the day. And so um, I have a friend that is, that was with us visiting, and she was so willing to join us join him in exercising. I have a piece of paper that I was able to find a simple routine that he has um, loved. Actually, a piece of paper that's hanged up there. Um, one side is um, routine one, and then on the other side is routine two. And he loves routine one, which consists of squats and um, bending and um, things of that nature. So here he is working on some squats. For whom the Lord loves, he chases. Hebrews 12, verse 6. Our, our next practical lesson is on godliness. Godliness. 
In Psalm 100 verse 4 it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful, be thankful to him and bless his name. Every morning I try to, um, uh, in our prayer corner, before we start our day, is to get them in the habit of learning how to praise and to be appreciative for the day. To, to thank God for waking them, waking them up in the morning, for giving them life. For, um, I will talk to them and ask, ask them, Adam, what are you thankful for? Or Naomi, what are you thankful for? And so, so if we can get, them, get our children in the habit of doing that, then I believe that they'll be more appreciative to who God is. Okay, this is um, an illustration of a tree where I was, a friend of mine um, shared with me a gospel of the tree. It's a series that I can um, share with you, Brother Sammy, um, at the time, at another time. But this is what I was trying to apply to my children by drawing a tree and having them name anyone in the family, any friends to pray for. And so this is our appreciation tree. And we wanted them, I wanted them to, to get in the habit, not only to explain to me why they appreciate each and every one on the tree, but also be in the habit to pray for them as well. We want to, to show appreciation for friends and loved ones when, they're, when they are alive. Is that true? And so we don't want to wait till they're dead and in the, the ground to say, okay, I wish I, wish I was able to say so to, to Tom or, or Betty. But make sure that, that this present moment is the time that we can show our appreciation to those we care about and love. Our next practical lesson is on kindness. In Ephesians 4, verse 32 says, and be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And here I have a picture of my, my precious ones, my gems, Adam and Naomi. And so um, I created a character development book. And so it's not complete, completed though, but some of these character qualities that you're hearing are in their book. And so I try to, um, I do hear uh, my, my daughter reminding her brother to do exactly that, to be kind to me, to love me, to um, be forgiven. And she would be more forgiven to him than he to her. But, but in a way, she is, she's teaching him and reminding him that, okay, if I did, if I hit you, I'm sorry. And, and he is, he's getting it. He's learning how to, to um, be led by her, by her kindness and her, her gentleness towards him. And, and he is now doing that to her. Practical lesson on love. If we love one another, God, sorry, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. 1 John 4, 12. And so every, every moment that I am with my children, I show them, show them in so many different ways how to love them. And by playing, playing um, uh, 
touch knuckles, as you see there with them, to say, we're, we are a team. In our family unit, we want to be reminded that we are team members. And so if we teach that to our children, that because they're a part of our household, they can be special members in, in the family team, team network. And because God, God, it, God and his son are centers, it is our center point to our family unit, then that's where true love that the angels will witness and see. In my final remarks, I want to leave this with you. Being com confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yes. Oh, Father God, we thank you so much for, for this time together. We thank you for your spirit in this place. We thank you for your son who came to die for us and even for our children. We ask that you would bind us, continue to bind us in love, and that all the trials and tribulations that we may be going through, that you will see us through. For we believe that you will carry us through. We know that worrying and doubts and everything is of the, of the enemy. And so we come by faith, knowing that, that, what, that what has become that seed that has been planted in us by your son will grow. It may not be at the time that we want, but Lord, we know that your son is a living water who will continue to pour his love on us. That when that time comes, we can say, yes, thank you, Lord. So we, Thank you for this time. We thank you for your goodness that is sure forevermore. Until we meet again, may you continue to, to be with your children as we depart from one another and bring us back again tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're welcome. You're welcome. And um, how? 
Okay, how, how do you say thank you in Swahili? Asante. 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 Yes. Asante. And how do you say you're welcome? God bless you, my friends. Bye bye. Thank you.